Welcome to OM Report by Andre Alpa, your interview-focused podcast on topics from online marketing to internet startups. Hi, Jim. So nice that you're here. Oh, Can you please okay. introduce yourself so to people in Europe that might not know you yet will okay. get to know you? Sure. Um, my name is Jim Boykin. I, um, I run Internet Marketing Ninjas. Um, we're at internetmarketingninjas.com. Been in business for 14 years now. Uh, we used to be called WeBuildPages.com. Let's see. We also own uh, Developer Shed, which includes SEOChat.com, DevShed, uh, Scripts.com. We own Create a Site Forums. We own Webmaster World. We own Threadwatch. Uh, we own SEO ROI. We employ uh, Chris Boggs, Chris Jones, Ann Smarty, Joe Hall. Uh, uh, who am I missing in here? Kim Krasberg. So we've been we've been really like having a crazy year here. <laughs> yeah, you, you, there's some, quite some growth as well, personnel-wise as well as platform-wise. So you're preparing for something really big. <laughs> uh, sure. Always, 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 uh, always dreaming big. Okay. Um, but you like before, like the years before have been relatively steady, steady, right? And there's like now a, quite a quite a boost of development. Well, over our history. I think in 2000, we slowly grew up, um, I was say I start, started hiring in 2002. In 2008, we had about 50 people. Um, 2008, Google came after us for buying links. Uh, you shouldn't buy links. <laughs> <laughs> um, and how do I say, we, we then, what, we went down, to, I think, to 35 eventually. And then we built back up over the course of a couple of years from 35 to over 100. Uh, we have over 100 employees that are in our building right now. So All right. it's been, uh, the past few years has really been a big, uh, I say Google hit us. I, I took a, you know, I, I took my punch. I went down on the ground and back up from the knees came and back stronger. up and it's like, I ain't going away. <laughs> right. But you don't have subsidiaries elsewhere. Like everybody's like in one big team in one, in one office. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all all in Clifton Park, New York, uh, a little north of Albany, New York. But um, you know, we're all we're all there except for how do I say? There's three people, three people that aren't in the office that uh, work remote, but everyone else is is right there. Okay, so it means that your let's say the the co colleagues that do a lot of consulting or like yourself, you fly a lot and travel a lot to see the clients. To see the clients, no. Okay. Um, unless unless we meet them at conferences. Okay. Um, so get, most we, of we your clients. Most of it over over phone and email. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So is there, so it's not not necessary even though even though they're big clients, big brands, not necessary to see each other often. We it, it's probably just not maybe it's not worth the time to mm. fly out and to go through all that when you know we can even do how do I say we do. We often will do sometimes video conference. Uh, okay. I often use Join.me to share screens. Uh, how do I say there's there is lots of phone communication, and when there needs to be screen shares, I guess I just never felt the need that I actually have to go to there. That's not to say that we never do, but uh, rarely. I mean, we'd be going too many places. We have sure. we have a few hundred clients, and it's just we wouldn't be able to go everywhere. Okay, so how is the those hundred people? That's quite a big agency. So how do you organize them? Are they like organized by, I don't know, by topic? For example, I don't know, e-commerce and, and and travel, or are they, or are they organized different? Like I don't know, like content yeah. guys, tech guys, link guys. We have we have in a sense four four main areas uh, of our building. Um, one area has the designers and programmers. Um, you know, so there's there's two main teams there, and uh, a leader of those two teams as well as the leader of those. And you know, on another side, we have uh, the link building uh, team, and um, that now uh, never buys links, well. obviously. Correct. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. In 2008, how do I say it? In 2008, it was made clear to me like. Uh, I shall, thou shall not buy links. <laughs> I'm always paranoid that someone's watching me. So, you know, it, it was actually, like, looking back on it now, like, in a sense, I'm thankful for it because when suddenly one day, like, you had to figure out a new way to build links and new strategies and long tail. And they all. helped like, you get on the like next level. Four years ago, yeah, I, I got ahead of where people today, they're getting hit by, like, Penguin are now, like, all right, now what? Like we can't do the mass stuff anymore. And but do you buy. think they got 
hit by Penguin because of they paid for the links or, or the kind of links that they were acquiring? Yeah. Or was it more like, you know, the exact um, match anchor text that got them Penguin? And in, then there's a different the question. End, if think, in the end, I think you're paying in one way or another. Um, either, either you're going directly to someone or you're... There's at least time that... very rare. There's almost all that I see... How do I say? That's not to say that Google doesn't pick up everything. What they're able to pick up is the stuff that's in mass and can be mapped. And so uh, things there are, plus there are certain signals. For example, um, f one of the types of links that could get you uh, affected by Penguin is uh, forum links. If someone like signs up at a forum and you look Profile at... Profile links? Yeah, and then like they, they joined one day, they made five comments mm -hmm. one day, and that was the only day that they ever made comments and you know comment number one was you know about one topic comment number or had a link about one thing comment number two is this especially like or things where uh, there hasn't been any talk for a long time on something like a three-year-old thread suddenly has a link on it there's there's all sorts of, of, of signals that google can pick up and too many of those raises big red flags and map networks within those are probably the ones that are getting hit by the penguin ones uh, by the penguin updates so uh, when you ask about pain I think those that are getting hit are doing things that at least can be mapped or is in bulk or sets off all these bad signals um, you know how do you how do you get links that are are natural it's like you can't you can't do the SEO stuff you can't you have to write the real shit to get the real links that are natural and aren't all going into pages with exact phrases. And it seems, it seems like for that. years people have been like um, using shortcuts, and now their shortcuts are not short anymore. Yeah, correct. I mean, or I mean, correct. Or you they know, just don't lead to the right exit. It's that whole balance of you know, at least with my business, people come to us and they're like, "We want to rank high." Uh, and usually it's you know that short tail phrase and you got to go through the long tail um, not always but uh, you know a lot of the time but you know people people want to rank and if they want to rank they need to get links if they're if, if they're buying if they're pressing buttons anywhere to get these things done they're buying the links I guess it's only the natural stuff mm. so they pay how do they how do your clients pay you is that by the hour by the, the time you spend trying to acquire links for them mm. like trying to building building campaigns that will earn the links or yeah, it's it's um or by the successful link that you've gotten luckily it's it's interesting we they pay us by we will start with a author for the website and that author on the website is going to write academic content. Uh, okay, that okay. academic content we're going to try and promote to highly trusted old websites. You know, it's like third third person writing in these academic articles, mm. trying to get the academic links, not not blog links, but like you know, real academic university and links, EDUs and govs, and like you know, the, the super highly trusted stuff. Is it also sometimes successful to go for like funny content that's like close to your well, client's topic? Well, that, that will then well, that get same other kind author of author is also going to blog. Okay, okay. And the blog is written in first person. Okay. I woke up this morning and you know yada yada yada. Okay. And that's to build up the following around that person. You know, it, it can be the funny stories or. You know, possibly could be an infographic one day, but they're gonna they're gonna write also in first person, and they're also gonna have social uh, accounts connected with that person, and that social is gonna you know promote you know the third person stuff and the blog stuff, and they're also gonna you know uh, look at the other influencers and everyone within that industry and start making those connections and you know start trying to get the the feedback from those and the connections going there because it. You know, a lot of where Google's moving to has to do with this, this authorship. So, you now have this author. If you can, if you can now, let's say, also get other other people to write. So, part of what we do too is maybe like we write coaching. to an educator and say, "Hey, Professor Bob, you, you know, here's something that we think you should link to on this page. You know, to help out people." And Professor Bob says, "Yeah, you know, you're right. Great article." And then we say. Professor Bob, you know, would you be interested in writing for you know this brand? You know, part part of what we do is connect people to brands. So when we find trusted people, we ask them if they'd be willing to write. 
and if they do, let's say even just one a month, or if they want to write like one a week or something, but we start adding them to the blog, and we're paying them to the blog as well. And then if we are writing news things as well with all of this, so now we're picking up all of those trusted author things because they're also going to have a profile like on the page and we're picking up all these real people, r real trust mm -hmm. being added to our site to these pages that now also can attract real natural backlinks without even having to ask people. Sure. A and then... They'll link to their articles that they wrote on your client's page, yeah, right? And they'll and they're gonna tell their social friends and and you know if we if we get a handful of people to now start writing for your site, we then also can submit your site to Google News. Sure. Now you can be the news for your industry. Sure, as but well. they've got Google New Google News has been quite strict with letting in news sources these days. I, I I remember well, old times when if, when I had a half a dozen in there. If your writers are all real people. And you know these are these are real profiles and these are real people. And if you have like a college professor and another highly trusted guy and another highly trusted you know, a handful of trusted people, and part of what you're writing is good up to date content, then you know it's not the new. When you submit to Google News, there's different categories of what kind of site that you are. They'll say the name actually next to it, and for a lot of them, it's like the type of site is going to be a blog. But it's like yes, it's very strict. But you can you can create the real thing again. It's like it's not gaming the system. You're the future of everything is moving towards authors and connecting real people to your site, and that's part of what we can do for people. So sure. like for five thousand dollars a month, that's you know how do we charge? Well, you're going to get some trusted links. You're going to get some articles. You're going to start getting these other things. We're going to start to possibly bring in some others. Um, we're going to be setting up social accounts. We're going to be like building up your first author. How do you so scale that? It's not so easy organization-wise. I mean, so you have. You, I mean, you have to have more and more people. The more and more clients you have, because it's just like additional work, right? It doesn't once scale like a software it tool. It does scale because once we start up your first person. Okay. Part of what the first person is going to be doing. It's is like a boost in the be, beginning. They're going to be looking to bring on other real people. To write for you. Okay, so you just try something initial, like yeah. an initial setup getting phase. Getting more new people to write to you doesn't cost us any time. Sure. I'm now getting real people to now write for you. I don't have to write the content. I don't have to promote the content. They're going to promote the content. Yeah. So They're it's like a little, the brand. like a self-lifting system. You're going to sell them a T-shirt. You're going to send them a camera and say, start taking some videos. Like you're a brand advocate. And us as a company, it doesn't. We just make the connections. Brand real people that's quite a it's quite a <laughs> unique approach right is that kind of your invention and and do others do it too that way because I don't, it's for, I don't for know anyone that does this okay it's quite well, unique I think I like I really like the approach uh, I don't I don't know anyone that's I, I guess it's really what would, would what would make Google happy right I mean that's really what they want so you just if made you a can service attach real people <laughs> to your brands and they're writing one blog post a month and you don't need to build links sure. that's the whole thing you can get out of the system. You can know. You also can tell your writers, "Here's a whole bunch of topics," and it's like, you know, you can run all sorts of keyword research and find the phrases that maybe aren't the they're not the brand converting phrases. They're the informational stuff. Great, really good. You know, you help to make the tagline like 101, blah blah blah. Like, but you, but we also will give our writers a whole list of here's some possible topics to write about. That's and they're good. like, oh, great, this sounds cool. And it's like you've already created the title, which is half the while you've done the keyword research, you've created the title. These things are going to rank too. Sure. And when they rank, they get found, and when they get found, they get backlinks and mentions. So how do you report? You don't have to build links anymore. Totally agree. You're done. <laughs> and you know what? Your white hat is fucking shit. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Like Google, there. Yeah. I connected real people to the brand. How do you do the reporting? Like an average agency would report, I don't know, the, the, the man hours spent or the links acquired, or how would you the, report? Like the number of articles that you've pushed or the, the outreach that you've they done? They see the articles because they have, they see, they see everything that we've published. They see all the, the backlinks that anything has, has gotten. Um, and, it, and that's, you know, no non, nothing, nothing paid. Seriously, nothing. There's nothing paid. There's no network. There's not like, hey, let's pull up the Rolodex. It's like it's literally writing to, to people when I'm, um, and that's very minimal. Um, and then they see they see all the articles written. They see all the social uh, uh, stats for every one of the articles. Um, you know, we start out with a huge report for clients. Uh, for most of the clients, 
we do a, a huge report uh, analysis. Like what, what can be done better on this site, like an on-page yeah. analysis well, kind of we, thing? Yeah, we analyze you know, on-page, the backlinks, the social, um, the technical, uh, like every every aspect. So the different teams are, are analyzing those areas. And basically the reports are done in a way so that it's like here, here is a problem. <laughs> Here's a link to it. Here's a screenshot of it. Here's the solution to the problem. Like, is this exactly what you need to do? Um, and then, you know, there's a list in the end of all the priorities under everything. And it's like, you can just hand that to someone and like, you know. Do this now. Yeah, like you, you can hand this to your programmers. They'll understand that. You can hand this to your designers. They'll understand that. You, you can do all of these things. Like, it's like everything that they can do with their resources, go ahead and do. Like, it's, it's all going to help. And then anything that they can't do, well, you know, we do have a programming team, we have a design team, we have a social team, you know, we, we have the technical team, and of course we have the link team and the content team, and like any, you know, anything that they can't do, we can do as well, so. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, we look at everything, and then a lot of times based on that report, we may say also, well, here's some other things that if you can't do them, you know, um, Know, we can do this for you. It would cost this amount each month. We can do this. We can like do this. Additional so, services that are exactly. available. Exactly. So it's not just this whole author thing that I've explained. We can. It's like a so like fun. a standard, slightly standardized start, and then from there on, it branches here's, out into different kinds of things. Here's 30 ideas for infographics. Here's 20 ideas for widgets. Here's you know here's all these other issues and blah 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 blah. blah. But there's a whole bunch of other stuff in there. So you're be like, all right, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of cool stuff. Okay, and I, when when you were uh, doing your presentation earlier today, uh, I had the feeling there's like a more of an entertainer there on stage rather than somebody you know passing out information. Is that like a, a certain mode that you have when you do presentation, or is it just like the mood of the moment? Or I I I put, I put together <laughs> eighty percent of that presentation yesterday. Um, I. I don't know. It was really <laughs> off the cuff. I I move stuff around so much. And I, I think it was so. I new thought it was fun. I hit the space bar. I wasn't sure what the next slide <laughs> was going to be. It was kind of a surprise to me as well. But do you know? Do you know this PowerPoint PowerPoint karaoke concept? Do you know that? No. There, there's people who meet up, and they have to they they have different PowerPoint files of all kinds of different topics, uh -huh. and then each person goes up, and has to do a presentation he has never seen before. So. He d they, they actually do <laughs> institutionalize what you have done yeah. uh, today. So they, they do on, on, a, on a topic they don't, don't even understand. They just give a presentation and then <laughs> later on people decide who has done the best presentation uh, on it. So it's PowerPoint uh, karaoke. Uh, so you sing along, but it's... really cool. So probably that's something you should train within your company. <laughs> then everybody will be able to do what you've done today. Uh, no, I, I, I got on some funny side stories. But, you know, I, I do the presentations myself. So that's why they're, they look like... You know, how do I say, I'm still using power, or, uh, yeah, PowerPoint, and I see all the newer ones, I'm like, yeah, it's like, you know, I, I do them myself, I usually try and do a different one every single time, so it usually ends up like the day before, oh shit, I gotta put together my presentation, but, you know, at least it's a different one every time, I've seen so many people where it's like, you know, I, I see them every few months or whatever, it's like, I already saw that presentation, and like, oh, So, like, on. how many trade shows do you do a year? I do about one a month. One a month, okay, yeah. that's, that's not too much. Yeah. All right. But uh, yeah, that was that was part of what I it was part of my dream with the business. The first show that I went to was in 2002, and I won the free pass from Joe Whalen. And and at that show, I remember looking at the people on stage. It was Search Engine Strategies 2008, and looking at them and being like, Wow! If I could become a speaker one day, I could. That would be my excuse to be able to travel all around <laughs> the country or the world or whatever. Like, but do you re really travel? I mean, do you take an additional day off at, at the conference place just to just to stroll I around do. or almost, meet people? Almost always, um, I go to uh, I'll go to the conference, you know, for the three or four days, and then do a national park for. Uh, two or three or four days as well. Oh, wow. Right after that, wow. so so it's always a bit of work, a bit of vacation. Yeah, I work them both in. I'll do the work and then I do the vacation. This Sounds one's good. in New York, which I'm really not doing it, but it's, <laughs> it's in my backyard. Like I, I hop on a train to come here. So. All right. Thanks a lot for your time, Jim. No, thank you very much. Thanks. OM Report and Andre Alpa would like to thank you for your attention. You can get more episodes on www.omreport.com.